Hi there and welcome to Bustonet. On today's show, we're going to take a quick look at the differences between a ball playing defender and a libero and how you can use them in your tactics. The ball playing defender is a very good role to use in football manager, but we need to understand uh, what it entails. In order for us to get the ball playing defender to bring the ball out of defense and bring it to the opponent's third, we essentially need a system which is has got no DM. And it also needs to be playing against the system that is sitting back. That is the, those are the conditions under which the ball playing defender will bring the ball as far as he can, sometimes even the, into the opponent's half because nobody is closing him down. This isn't very common. Um, in fact, it's pretty rare in the game. I use ball playing defenders in uh, four man back lines a lot because I want them to be comfortable under pressure. And whenever I come against teams that are playing with a high press, the ball playing defenders, if they have the technical ability, can play them their way out of the high press. However, there are other conditions that you need to fulfill before you can successfully come out of a high press. Uh, one of them has to be uh, having a system that is narrow enough that you have passing options for the ball playing defender. In order for you to play the game, in order for you to play the kind of game where the ball playing defender plays that kind of, um, in order for you to get the ball playing defender bringing the ball out of defense, first he needs to have the technical skills. This includes uh, dribbling, first touch, vision, decisions. He also needs to have the player trait brings ball out of the defense and you also need to be playing with the team instruction play it out of defense the libero is a role that you can play in a three-man back line and he's actually quite a fantastic role to play in uh, fm19 now if you're looking for a role that can sometimes take up positions that are higher than a defensive midfielder in the opponent's third this is the role for you Using a libero alongside a deep line playmaker on a defend duty in a three man back line. Notice where my libero is as we're moving the ball into the opponent's third. He's actually almost as high as a defensive midfielder, giving us plenty of interesting passing options if we need to in the opponent's third. And sometimes uh, he will get himself into some um, dangerous positions where he could be caught out of position. Just look at how high our libero is in this transition as we move the ball into the opponent's third. He's working very closely with the DM and stringing cross-field passes for the team. The libero gives us plenty of options when we set up three-man uh, defences. As long as we're not playing with a defensive midfielder, the libero can position himself quite high up the pitch, giving us plenty of options when we have the ball. I play with a ball playing defender in a three man back line and I'm not using a DM. I normally like to ask him to be a stopper. This will encourage him to step up for interceptions uh, when there's no defensive midfielder playing in front of them. You will also notice that during transitions when we have the ball and we are attacking the opponent's third, the ball playing defender is not as aggressive as the libero. Here you see he's keeping in line with the rest of the defenders when we have the ball so that he can quickly transition back into defense. The libero on the other hand tends to require more work rate, fitness, decisions, anticipation and concentration in order for him to get back quickly. So if you want to use a libero in your three-man defense, you need to first ensure that you have the right kind of player. He needs to have the attributes for that role. Um, those attributes are easily listed in the game. Um, the best attribute that I would think that he would need is going to be work rate, anticipation, concentration and decisions. These four will drive his ability to make the right decision uh, as to when to go up and when to come back down. I managed to get both the ball playing defender and the libero to move into um, the to, I have managed to get both the ball playing defender and the libero to move aggressively into opponent's halves. Now, there are certain times when the ball playing defender out on the flanks uh, will enter and become part of the attacking transition. First, he needs to the brings ball out of defense uh, player trade. Then you need to be playing out of defense. And the third condition is very hard to fulfill because it's not under your control. And that is you're playing against a team that's not playing with a four up front. They're playing with a defensive system. They're sitting back and they're not pressing you aggressively. When this happens in your team is bringing the ball up. They meet no resistance. This allows the ball playing defender to actually bring the ball high and into the opponent's half. These kind of things don't happen all the time. And you are... Uh, it's they're, they're rare. I've in my own personal saves, I've only noticed it happening maybe three times out of the hundred games I've played. The attribute demands for the libero are quite high. 
I normally focus on four. If the player doesn't have it, I never play him as a libero. Decisions, anticipation, acceleration, and concentration. If they don't have these four attributes, I hardly ever play them as a libero. As far as a ball-playing defender is concerned, the requirements are less strict. Personally, I like playing ball with personally I like playing with ball playing defenders in my systems. Um, there are times when I'm going to be faced with a high press, and it's a risk when you play with a ball playing defender because these guys can get under pressure if they don't have the right attributes. So whenever I face teams playing a high line against my ball playing defenders, I typically tell my team to play narrower. This means that more players are in position to receive the pass and the pressure is taken off the ball playing defender or the libero. So how do you set them up? Now, if you have a libero, ideally you'd want to have a DM in front of him, like a defensive midfielder sitting right in front of him in the hole. And I sometimes I also strongly feel that you shouldn't have playmakers in front of him. This encourages the DL, libero to push himself into the opponent's third and act like the playmaker. When it comes to the ball playing defender, I generally like to play him on the side of a midfield that does not have a playmaker. That way, he's encouraged to bring the ball forward. So, if I have a system where I have two players in midfield, one of them happens to be a playmaker and the other one happens to be a Carrillo or a central midfielder on support, then the ball playing defender will play behind that central midfielder on support. He will not be playing behind the playmaker. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short little guide on the libero and the ball playing defender. If you have any questions, you know to find me. You can always look me up on the Discord channels or look me up on Twitter at Bustinet or addicted to fm.com, my website. Once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel. We make this kind of shows possible for the rest of the community. You guys take care. Have fun. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.